Hi, this is Crystal. Are you ready for more planning? First, let's play a little pool. Come on, cool. I like to filter through the crowd and saunter to the back of where they're playing that game of pool. For more great tutorials, visit our sponsor, everythingaccess.com. We learned that the first step in planning a database is to prepare. Visualize. See what you will keep track of. What is it? What does it look like? Organize. Follow naming guidelines. The time you spend up front creating a solid structure with logic will save you endless headaches down the road. A discussion about naming would not be complete without mentioning standard guidelines. We have mainly discussed tables because that is where you need to start. Access has tables, queries, forms, reports, macros, and modules. As we get further in our lessons, we will be covering each in detail. For now, realize they exist and there are conventions for naming them. The same guidelines that apply to field names are also applicable to table names. Aside from the common sense guidelines I have been giving you, Lisinski and Reddit created a convention which is widely used. They suggest descriptive tags at the beginning of all object names such as tables and queries. If an object is a table, it will start with TBL. In my databases, anything without a prefix is a table. I don't preface tables with TBL because it's more to type and mentally skip. The Lisinski Reddit convention uses QRY to denote a query. I use Q underscore. Lisinski Reddit uses FRM to specify a form. I use F underscore. Lisinski Reddit uses RPT for reports. I use R underscore. Lisinski Reddick uses MCR for macros. I don't normally use macros, except an auto-exec macro, which automatically executes when the database is opened. Lisinski Reddick uses BAS for modules. I do that too. The more you research, the better ideas you will get to create your own style. I say one thing and others say something different. Who is right? We all are. You need to decide what is best for you. What you choose as a naming convention is not as important as having one. Naming is a personal preference and we all have our own logic. It is recommended that each field in a database have a unique field name. Not just unique to the table, which Access makes you do, but in the whole database. The exception to this is in naming key fields. I like to keep key field names the same in different tables. It represents the same piece of information. Why not put address and phone in the same table with people? Excellent question, Barbara. Let me tell you about my Aunt Sally. I don't have a picture to show you, but here are the flip-flops she left at my house when she visited. Aunt Sally lives in New York, and, and still does, kind of. A few years ago, she bought a beach house in Florida to have a warm place to go for the winter. So she has two addresses. If we moved address fields into the people table, we would either have to create two records for Aunt Sally. Aunt Sally is one person she should have one record in the people table. Another option is to create two sets of address fields. While this might seem to solve the problem, it creates another one. If we want to print an address list, we would have a bunch of empty fields, and we would have to look in two places for the address. And I would need three address sets to accommodate my nephew. This is called a repeating group, and it's against the rules of normalization. Using numbers and field names often indicates that the data is not structured correctly. Repeating groups make it harder to report data. Another reason to store addresses in a different table is because some people in your database may live in the same house. If an address is already in the database, are you going to put it in again? Wouldn't it be better to just pick it and move on? The same reasons to put addresses in a separate table apply to phone numbers. If you have fields called home phone, work phone, and cell phone, there would not be enough places for the four cell phone numbers that my friend Bill has. 
The people table is the heart of this database. Let's think very carefully how we are going to set it up. We touched on storing humans and companies together. They're together in the phone book, and that works well. You can look up a human by their last name and look up a company by the company name. So let's create a field called name main. Now humans have a lot more names than companies. They can also have a first name, middle name, salutation, suffix, nickname. There are a couple things humans have that companies don't. Gender and date of birth. Remember we said that if the data in a field is short to use a short field name? Our salutation field will be short, something like Mr. or Ms. So we will shorten the field name to salute. For now, we will refer to these as human fields. Humans and companies both have a category in notes. Every table should have a way to uniquely identify each record. A primary key is a unique field or combination of fields in a table. Access has a data type called auto number, which is a unique long integer generated by Access. This is, for the most part, what we will use for the primary key. In the categories table, cat ID is the primary key. In the people table, cat ID is a foreign key. So what is cat ID in the people table? That's right, it's a foreign key. And if we have cat ID, then we do not need the category field. There are two types of key field schemes, natural keys, are values such as account number or product code. Advantages are that they are meaningful. The values already exist and they are easy to recognize. Artificial keys are meaningless generated values. Advantages are they don't take much space to store, so they are efficient and often faster to link. No need for composite multi-field keys or worry about changing meaningful data that may be part of a natural key. Key fields can be transparent to the user, so the fact that they don't mean anything doesn't matter. So which is better, natural or artificial? Like naming, everyone has their own opinion. Some of the top experts in the business, such as John Vieskas, who has written several excellent books, is in favor of natural keys. I like artificial keys, except for state and country abbreviations, which are only two characters and have standard values. As we design tables, we should also determine how they relate to each other. We already know that a category must first exist before a person can be assigned to it. The most common type of relationship is a one-to-many relationship. For each one category, such as friend, there can be many people. There are three types of relationships. A one-to-one -one relationship is when one record in the main table correlates to just one record in a related table. A one-to-many relationship is when one record in the main table correlates to many records in a related table. A many-to-many -many relationship is when one record in the main table corresponds to many records in the related table and one record in the related table correlates to many records in the main table. One-to-one -one relationship examples. All humans and companies are in the people table. A person may also be an employee, in which case there would be information in an employee's table. For security purposes, you may choose to list financial information in a separate table. To make it easier to restrict access to sensitive information, your expenses table may have everything together to make it easier to see how much money is being spent on a project. But the detail to justify the cost may be different depending on what it is. One-to-many relationship examples. A person may have many phone numbers. An invoice may have many detail lines. A music CD usually has many songs. A recipe has many ingredients. Many-to-many -many relationship examples. People can have many addresses, and an address may have many people. A photo can have many people, and a person may be in many photos. A supplier can carry many products, and a single product may be available for many suppliers. A student takes many classes, and each class has many students. We discussed the lisinski reddick naming convention. We set up field names for the table that is the heart of our database, people. We answered Barbara's question about why addresses and phone numbers are stored in separate tables. Primary keys and foreign keys are very important. There are three types of relationships, one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. In the next lesson, we will structure the rest of the initial tables, create field names, and discuss more relationships that will be needed. The concepts that we are covering are very important, and I want you to have successful databases.
Captain Brick, I'm with a lightning bolt from outer space. You know it's boo. 